they should start at home. That that is the fabric of our the building blocks of our society. And unfortunately, it's not as strong as it used to be at all. Kids are going hungry. Kids, uh, I see them when I go talk to them in class. They're sitting there going to sleep because they didn't get any sleep the night before. So they slept in the cold house, or tried to sleep in the cold house on an empty stomach. And you can't study if you need sleep. You can't study on an empty stomach. So I know, I know the issues. I wish the faith-based community could do more. There's not enough. And and. Unfortunately, the faith-based community comes up with helping hands and, and some money, but they lack the training. That's one thing the state has. We have some training in some of these agencies, most of them under DHS, Department of Health. So I, 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 I agree with you. There's probably, probably, if we talked about it all night, there's probably something eventually we hadn't heard, but we've just heard so many terrible stories, and we're trying. But... I wish I could fix bullying. I wish I could fix broken homes or lack of homes. But uh, there are certain things we need to do in the state. Yeah, we have to be careful. We don't, you know. I don't know if this is anything that you guys can do about it at the state level. But the federal lunch program, where the kids are really, I mean, yeah. their calories are great. And they're probably all losing weight, and that's good, I suppose. But they're going home hungry. Is there any way that the state can supersede that? Not supersede the federal government and the guidelines, no. Opt out? <laughs> no, well. <laughs> <laughs> we opt out, we might be with out. <laughs> I know, it gets aggravating. And, and that's where I think that discretion at the school. You know, there are certain things. I'm, and I don't run a school, so I don't know how, how far you can stretch it, but I know there are certain things with some good common sense that you can go ahead and take care of those kids. And federal government, well, until you come, you know, drag me out of there, I'm going to take care of the kids. And I, and I think we have, I know all the administrators and the principals, and uh, I think they do all they can. And, and uh, oh, uh, DHS has, and they don't have it in all the school sites, but, uh, oh, what's uh, Terry with DHS that, uh, school-based oh, thank you. School-based social workers. Pardon? School-based social workers. All right, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. You helped me. Oh, and that's what Brenda said. Uh, I went with her one day to, to uh, they bundle up, uh, snack. it's a little, little more than a snack, but it's not a meal. And they'll put them in these kids, and they know, I mean, it's not just every kid, it's identified kids. Mm -hmm. And they do it when the kids aren't around. Matter of fact, we were in the hall at one of the other schools, I think it was over Lincoln. Is that right, Elementary? Mm -hmm. And well, because we started at T, that's where her office is. Mm -hmm. And uh, a little kid came down the hall, he's probably going to the bathroom, and he said, what are y'all doing? And she did such a great job not letting him know what we were doing, because he knew that was not our backpack. <laughs> so, you know, there, there's a lot of things we don't, or I didn't know about that, that a lot of folks are doing to help these kids, but we can't supersede the federal government. No. Somebody up, Charles. Uh, you were talking about parents who take care of the kids and watch them after them. I don't know whether you term it enforcement or unfortunate, but I had talked to him about school bus for 10 years. You really, until you're exposed to that, you don't realize how bad some of these kids have it. Yeah. After they started the breakfast program, I told my wife, she'd worked school for 30 years. I said, that's ridiculous. Why would you have breakfast? Well, 30 days later, I figured out they were having breakfast so those kids would come to school hungry. Okay, but then from Rocky Point, you'll get hung up once to three times a week by train. I was going to be late to get to school. I'd have 8, 10, 12 kids. Are we going to get there time for breakfast? <laughs> It got to the point that I had to call the school and say, hey, I'm going to go by train. Yeah, don't put them in the food. Don't put them in the keep it out. But the thing is, appalling is the number of kids, and I'm talking about first, second, third graders. Mom was not at home at night. Mom didn't show up at night. They didn't get any breakfast. Some of them didn't get any breakfast. They didn't come out with clean clothes on. I and I had one little girl, but and as a bus driver, if I know there's not a parent at home, no one there. I can't leave that young child. Right. This lady came out next door and she said, I've been trying to help him. She said, I want to feed the little girl. The mother's going to give me a cousin because she told me to mind my own business. 
Uh, it's and to you and all these people that I hear on the news to talk about what they ought to do for the kids, they ought to go out and be exposed to what is actually happening. I know there are some parents that do a great job, but we've got a pretty large percentage that really don't care. And I, you can't legislate that, but yeah. other than some self help programs for the schools. I would like to make one comment in that. I mean, don't ever be afraid, though, to call the DHS hotline. And we are trying to get there. If problems with that, we're trying to fix. Or let your local DHS person know. Let them know. I mean, <laughs> I know. With the Pinnacle Plan, hopefully with the Pinnacle Plan, you know, we're putting a net. We put 25, almost $30 million into it last year. We're, we're looking at putting another 40 to $46 million into it this year to expand it even more. But the hotline, man, that's been our that's been our biggest issue right. is trying to make it where if you call the hotline, you're not on there for more than yeah. just a few minutes. Um, because if we can't get somebody at, if we can't get the information in about who these kids are that we need to go and check on, mm -hmm. then yeah, Terry and Terry and Monica both knew me. Yeah. The sheriff Department both knew me because when they well, got to good. the point that I couldn't get someone to yeah. be responsible for this child, I had no alternative other than a lawsuit. But on to me if I let that child out. Hey. Call the sheriff's office. Absolutely. Hey, this child's going to be taken care of. Well, I'm glad you did. I'm glad you did. Yeah, that's, that's the best thing you can do. So thank you for that. But, but when you go home tonight, yeah. Jeff said, talk to yourself, you know, did I do the right thing? Uh, yeah. No, you did. I mean, because they, they need to go and check on those kids. And sometimes that will fix, that may yeah. fix the problem. Yeah. If DHS shows up at their doorstep, then it scares them for a while and they'll take better care of their kids. And it may only last a month, yeah. maybe it only last. You get some help. But if it, if it lasts even yeah. some time, that, you, that you, people appreciate you it. You reach a few of those, they find a way to start a better course.